Thanks for joining me today. I'm Corel Painter Master Aaron Rutten. And in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the Trees and Foliage Essentials brush pack for Corel Painter Essential 6. I have a painting I created here that I'm going to enhance using this Trees and Foliage brush pack. You'll notice in the layers palette, I have quite a few layers set up here ahead of time. So let's go ahead and start by selecting the Trees and Foliage Essentials brush category here in the brush selector. And then we'll start near the top with a broad bush. I have a layer I've created here called broad bush. And if I make that visible, you can see down here in the bottom right, there's a broad bush. I'll show you how I created that. I wanna select kind of a cooler green that's a bit darker. And I'll just demonstrate up here in the sky. I wanna make kind of a squiggly mark here like this. And I wanna make my color a little bit brighter by going up and to the right. And then I want to shift my hue on this ring here toward yellow and do another little squiggly mark. But I wanna stay more or less on the top right side of this clump because the light in this scene is coming from the top right. Now that wasn't quite light enough, so I'm gonna make my color even brighter. Let's do a little squiggly mark here, and now we can see we're starting to build up a highlight on the side of this bush. You can keep going brighter and brighter if you want. Now just as well, you could hold Alt and sample that previous color you were using and put some of that back in until you end up with something that you're happy with. Let's go ahead and move on to the next brush, and that will be bush. I'm gonna create a new layer here for the bush. I'll go ahead and put in a bush somewhere here near the bottom. And I just wanna do kind of squiggly strokes that build up like this. You can use lighter pressure if you want the bush to be smaller. Or you can use heavier pressure if you want it to be broader. So you could even make some sort of hedge sculpture like this if you wanted to. Now what's gonna work the best is if you start going from the top and you move down because then the leaves will overlap in a natural way but it really depends on what the perspective is in your image. The color that I'm using here is kind of a yellowish green color and it's a little bit dark, but you could choose just about any color you want here for your bush. You could even have kind of an orange old dead bush like this. Let's move on to the next brush and that is fine grass. I have a layer that I've created ahead of time called fine grass, I'll just make that visible. If we do a before and after, you can see it's kind of hiding there in the background and it's just adding a little bit of detail and character to the grass. I'm gonna go ahead and hold Alt and I'm gonna sample this grass color here. And I'll just paint with it up here in the sky and you can see how it works. You get these really nice grass blades. If you use a lighter pressure, then you get kind of thinner, fainter grass. If you use heavy pressure, you get really thick grass like this. So similar to that bush brush that we were using, you wanna start in the background and work your way into the foreground like this so that your grass overlaps correctly. You may also want to just do a row of light grass and with each row of grass just get a little bit darker each time. That way you get some sense of perspective. If you make your brush smaller then you get smaller thinner grass and as you make it bigger that grass starts to get a little bit taller. Now when you're selecting a brush size for this particular brush it can be a little tricky because the cursor doesn't accurately show the size of the brush. So I have this huge brush here you'd expect that that would be the width of the grass but if I do a stroke, you can see it's not, it's pretty small. You can also change your brush size up here in the brush properties, and that's a good way to easily make a really big brush. Let's move on to the next brush, and that is hedge. You wanna do kind of squiggly strokes like you did with the other bush brushes, but this particular brush, if you just do a little dab, is kind of circular shaped, so that gives you the opportunity to kind of build up clumps that have gaps in them. This is kind of an extreme example. I'm gonna turn on this hedge layer here and you can see how I used the hedge. Very similar to the broad bush. I started with a dark color and then I make my color lighter and shift the hue and make sure to have the lighting on the correct side. You can do something like that. Again, you can sample that middle color and put that back in if you need to or sample the dark color and put that back in. Sample the lighter color, put that back in. And the more you build it up, the more realistic it's gonna look. Let's switch to the next brush, and that is Leaf Clump. I have a layer here called Leaf Clump Foreground, and you can see how I used it on this bare tree to add some clumps of leaves. I also have Leaf Clump Background, which is behind the tree trunk layer. So one is in front and one is behind. That way I have some leaves going behind the branches. I'll go to that Leaf Clump Foreground layer, and I'll just paint with that brush, and you can see it creates these nice clumps of leaves with gaps in between them. If you make your brush smaller, then you get smaller clumps that are tighter together. If you make your brush bigger, then you get these bigger, broader clumps that are farther apart. 
So I'll go ahead and hide the leaf clump layers that I created ahead of time, and I'll create a new layer, and I'll show you how this works. We want to start with a darker color, just like we did with the bushes. Then we want to use kind of lighter pressure and build up our pressure to spread the leaves out wherever we need to. We just put in little clumps like this here and there, and you can be kind of spontaneous about it, but they're going to be at the end of the branches, where the branches are finer. But you don't want it to be too uniform. You want the leaves to spread out in some areas and be closer together in others. I just do something kind of like that. You get a pretty nice leaf effect. And then of course I'll want to make my color brighter and shift the hue a bit toward yellow and put in a few little dabs here and there of these lighter leaves. Again, I want to make sure to keep my light on the right side here. And each time you want to have fewer and fewer highlight leaves. Go a little bit brighter again. Put in a few of those. And we get a pretty nice effect here for our tree. Now if you put down some leaves like this and you're not 100% happy with the color, you can always go to Effects, Tonal Control, Adjust Colors, and you could shift the hue if you wanted them to be more green like this. You could increase the saturation if you want them to be brighter. You could decrease the value if you want them to be darker or increase it if you want them to be lighter. So you have a lot of control over your paint after you put it down. Let's say maybe I want them to be orange like this, I could do that. Let's go to the next brush here, and that is palm leaf. Now palm leaf is going to look really out of place in this painting. We'll just create a new layer for it. And I want to select kind of a neutral green that's not too yellow or too blue. Maybe something like this. And I'll just put a palm leaf up here in the sky. I'm just going to draw kind of an arch shape like this. But I want to kind of go out very slowly like this, and then really quickly curve over. So up slowly, curve over quickly. Up slowly, curve over quickly like that. And you'll have to do a little bit of practice here, but once you get the technique down, you can make these really nice palm leaves. But it does take a little bit of practice to get it right. Let's move on to the next brush, which is tall grass. We'll create a new layer for that. I'm going to select a yellowish color like this, and I'll demonstrate up here in the sky how this works. I'm going to use firm pressure with my pen, and I can draw in some nice grass like that. If you use a smaller brush, then you get smaller grass. If you use a bigger brush, then you get bigger grass. But again, you want to start kind of in the background and then move your way into the foreground. And you can actually increase your pen pressure to make that grass bigger. So it starts out kind of small in the background, and then you increase pressure as you go into the foreground, and that gives you that nice perspective. Almost looks kind of like a hay bale when it's here in the background. Let's move on to the next brush, and that is Thick Leaf. I'm going to create a new layer for that. I'll select a greenish color like this. I'll hide those leaf clumps on the trees, and we can put in some thick leaves here. This is a different leaf style, but you could use it like this, or you could use it to create treetops or bushes, just about anything you want, but it sprays out these little leaf particles like so. You could even have them kind of curve down and hang like this. If you do little strokes that hang down. Let's move on to the next brush, and that is tree trunk. Where there is foliage, there is often tree trunks. So let's take a look at how to put some of those in. I'm going to show this layer that's called tree trunk and branches, and I'll show you how I created this. I'm going to start with a dark color, and let's hide this tree trunk that's on the left here. We'll put in a tree over here. Now your brush width is going to determine the width of the trunk as well. So if you have a small brush, you're going to get a small trunk. If you have a big brush, you're going to get a thick trunk. So I want something that's a little bit thicker here. I'm going to have this come from off the canvas and then just do kind of a slow stroke and let it taper off like that. Make my brush a bit smaller. I could also have it kind of jagged like this if I wanted it to be jagged. I could also use it to build up the trunk thicker by doing overlapping strokes like so. And I could have little pieces kind of come off of it like this. Now we have a separate brush we're going to use to draw the branches in just a minute. Let's go ahead and select a lighter brown now. And on the highlight side, we'll use a smaller brush just to put in a little bit of detail here on the tree. If you use lighter pressure, then you get kind of a thinner, scratchy brush, which gives you all those nice textures. Something like that looks pretty good. We'll make our paint a little bit lighter. Shift the hue a bit. Just put in a little bit of highlight here on the tree. Now we have a nice tree trunk. If we want to add some branches, we'll switch to our final brush, which is called branches up here at the top. We'll sample this dark color from the tree, make our brush a bit thicker so we get a thicker branch. 
and then we get these nice scraggly branches. You just want to start with heavy pressure and then taper off with lighter pressure. That'll give you that nice branch effect. Have one come off of here. Maybe this is an old dead tree, so most of the branches are broken off. We'll have one that comes back there like that. We'll sample our brownish colors, and we want to put in a few little highlights here on some of the branches. Get that lighter highlight and put in some of that. And that makes a pretty nice looking tree. So there you go, that's a demonstration of how to use the Trees and Foliage Essentials Brush Pack in Corel Painter Essentials 6. If you enjoyed this tutorial, take a quick second to click the like button, and make sure to click that subscribe button to get access to a lot more Corel Painter tutorials like this. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.